and Hunger. For those who don't know out there, uh, Fear and Hunger is a indie uh, M-Sim slash RPG uh, that takes place in an incredibly edgy... Um, uh, edgy is the wrong word, but I don't want to say anything that's going to get it demonetized. A very messed up world, okay? It is heavily inspired by Berserk. If you're a fan of Berserk or if you've ever heard of Berserk, so it's a very, uh, very, very dark uh, fantasy universe, and uh, and it is also it doesn't really pull any punches with regards to um, violence and depictions of uh, basically anything anything bad that you can imagine is probably present to some degree in Fear and Hunger. Um, it's a very, very messed up world, uh, but. It is extremely well written. The presentation and atmosphere of the world is incredibly compelling, and it is terrifying. It's uh, a really difficult game. That's part of the draw. Uh, it's it's very punishing, and uh, I have played Fear and Hunger uh, a couple of different times. This time, I am playing with the goal of actually completing the game and getting some of the endings, and. Uh, and so I, I actually have de I decided because after like literally hours of just dying and doing the same small stretch of the game over and over again, I decided that I would let myself have infinite saves finally. Um, by default, the game is incredibly cruel with its save system and you, uh, you, have, to, you have to play very procedurally, um, but also... That requires a bit of a time commitment, uh, which I don't really have this that level of time commitment, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but uh, I, I found it quite enjoyable. I've played, like, I don't even know, 10, 12 hours of the game with no mods whatsoever, and only now have I, like, actually installed some mods. Um, it's, a, it's a very awesome game. Um, uh, but, uh, but it's very hardcore <laughs> and it can be a little terrifying. Um, I, 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 I do find it very compelling though. There's something about, uh, the sort of an, an unhinged dark fantasy. You know, there's a lot of dark fantasy that is dark fantasy because it's like, this guy's name is Murder McKill, and he burnt down a whole village. This game is more like, uh, yeah, there's a kingdom that's having a plague, and their response to the plague is to open up the world's biggest dungeon to punish anybody who disagrees with the crown in any way. And the dungeon is so rotten and terrible and filthy um, and evil that uh, it's it's it creates a a miasma. It, it opens. It, it's there's so much concentrated evil in this dungeon that it opens rifts in the world for gods to to influ for evil dark gods to influence the world through. Um, it's incredible. It's really the, the lore is great. Um, and uh, I've been playing it again, and I've been really really enjoying it. Um, initially, I heard whispers about the game um, just, you know, through the grapevine. And then I watched a video by Super Eye Patch Wolf, if you ever heard of him, uh, on Fear and Hunger. And then I was like, okay, I gotta play this game. Now there's a Fear and Hunger 2 as well, which is called Fear and Hunger 2 Termina, which I'm very much looking forward to playing. Also, and of course, this will come as no surprise to my regular viewers, but uh, this game is very, very gay. Um, and also, there is a canonically trans lesbian character in the second game. So, uh, pretty cool on that front. Uh, the game is very gay. Um, in fact, it's really funny. The game it actually has a secret mode. There is a... Uh, there is a... In the first game, when you beat the game, you will receive a cheat code to use at the start menu. And if you go and use the cheat code at the start menu, you unlock the dating sim version of the game. 
which is still very, very messed up and has lots of violence and evil and whatnot, but you're also playing a dating sim instead, which is kind of funny. Um, it's a, uh, there is a, yes, it's in the first game. It's the secret difficulty. It's hidden as a, as a, uh, advanced difficulty option. And it set, it threatens players by saying like the faint of heart will not be able to play this mode. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, it's incredibly, uh, it's incredibly good. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, promising. Uh, uh, for the future from the dev, the dev, the dev seems, uh, incredibly creative. Uh, I will say as a warning, it's a bit of a pervert, pervert game in more ways than one. Okay. Not only is it, uh, generally twisted in its, uh, in its thematics, it talks about a lot of very heavy and dark subjects, but it also has that, uh, it has that, has that magic, you know, um, like half of the enemies in the game no not half but i would say like somewhere between five and ten of the total enemies in the game it's not that long of a game but the enemies you encounter can kill you with their genitalia which is kind of a kind of a thing you don't encounter that very often you don't encounter an enemy that can kill you um with its genitalia um and uh and basically everything in the game is a dark trap. Never trust anything uh, ever. It's always a trick, okay? Um, yeah, quite literally, uh, little Morphine Annie, quite literally. Um, you can indeed actually just get dick to death. That is true. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, it, Proud Platypus says there's a streamer mode that puts a weird pine cone in the place of the body parts. It actually puts a pine cone pig. If I remember correctly, the streamer mod uh, changes it, and it also changes the references uh, because the default version of the game is uh, is is kind of banned on a lot of platforms. Does it have VR? No, it's a um, it's like a, it's made. It was made originally an RPG maker, so it has like a 2D old school JRPG style to it. Um, it's a great game. I don't want to spoil too much. But uh, the basic premise is that uh, is that you are playing one of four main characters um, who, for various reasons, have appeared at the Dungeons of Fear and Hunger, which is the most notorious dungeon in the entire kingdom that you live in. It is a a uh, a multi-level dungeon that goes deep into the earth that is rumored to have been built on top of the ruins of an ancient city of the gods. Now, that's just a rumor. That's just a rumor. You go there for, like I said, each of the characters has their own motivation for ending up in the dungeons. One of them was arrested and put in the dungeons. One of them is there to try and get revenge on someone who's being held in the dungeons. One of them is there to rescue someone who's held in the dungeons. One of them is there because they want to investigate the anomalies that have appeared in the dungeons. And regardless, your characters all convene on this location. And when you arrive there, things have gone terribly wrong. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the guards are, have a, some of them have, most of them have abandoned their posts. Uh, there are monsters. There are uh, un unexplainable events. And you basically have to plunge yourself deep into the dungeon uh, to accomplish your goal uh, and decide whether or not it was actually worth it to come at all. Um, and like I said, along the way, you will encounter an incredible amount of uh, violence and and uh, depravity, torture. Um, it's a very messed up game. Definitely uh, deserving of its adults only uh, 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 it doesn't actually have an AO rating, but it is an adults only game for sure. Um, and, uh, the game plays like an RPG. So you have a character, you give them equipment, you have turn-based battles when you get into combat, but it also has immersive sim elements. At all times, you will be managing your health, your sanity, um, various diseases that you can contract, your fears, and, um and your hunger. Hunger is one of the most important features in the game. So as you crawl through the dungeons, you have to find sources of food uh, to keep yourself alive. 
and let's not let's hope you don't have to resort to cannibalism or maybe you're like me and i play the cannibal character to begin with why not um but yeah uh uh that's the game it's really good and i recommend that uh if you are into uh the darkest of the dark type fantasy you should check it out uh i think that it is uh a a very creative experience the lore is incredibly uh inviting it grips you and makes you want to go wow i want to find out more about this universe and it's absolutely loaded with berserk references sometimes maybe even a little too many berserk references seeing as how one of the characters is quite literally just a character directly from berserk but they changed his name but <laughs> Anyway, um, anyway, it's a, uh, it's a really good game, and it has a sequel that I have heard is even better. Um, the sequel takes place in the same universe, but in, like, a World War One type era. So, time skipped forward, society has moved on, and the evils have not. Um, it's really cool. Uh, uh I, I have not played the second one yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And I urge you to go check out Fear and Hunger. That's all I have to say about it right now. Go check it out. It's a really, really cool game. But prepare yourself for a hard time. Anyway, thanks for watching.